Hey guys, today I'm going to talk to you about objective key results. We can use objectives and key results to create ambitious goals. By making them specific and measurable, we're going to improve engagement and actually make it more possible to attain those really ambitious goals. Through the video, I'm going to dive in, show you examples of what my goals are for 2020. Hopefully they can inspire you for your goals. I'll give you some other generic examples and we're going to use a tool called Week Done to track all of this as well. So let's dive right in and hopefully we can smash these goals for 2020. I learned about OKRs or objective key results from the Google's Adopt a Starter program. This was actually one of the best lectures in the program and I'm really glad I went purely for this lecture alone. And throughout this talk here, in this video, I'm just going to basically run you through what I took from that talk and hopefully it'll help you with your goals for 2020. So look, we're all probably pretty ambitious people watching this type of video. We want to make sure our goals are equally ambitious. Google actually rec recommended to us on the program that about 70% of our goals should be achieved. If you're getting 100% of your goals achieved, it's most likely that you're setting your goals to be a bit too easy and that you should aim for what they call stretch goals. So stretch goals would be stuff that, that would be just out of the realm of possibility to be kind of like scarily big to achieve. So if you can set your goals with that kind of uh, mindset in mind, that's the area you really want to be in where something that just feels really tough but really ambitious. And if you don't make it, at least you've made massive progress. You don't want to have too many objectives for your year or quarter either. Usually something around three to five is probably the sweet spot. Anything more than that and you can really get clouded on what you should be focusing on at any one time. Your objectives and your key results should really push progress as well. It shouldn't really just be like, keep doing X, Y, or Z. It should really be like, set your um, quality assurance rate to a record high by 10% of last year. Something along those kind of lines. They should really be outcome oriented so that if, uh, it should be blindingly obvious if they're achieved or not. Like, did you make it to X mark? Did you not make it to X mark? And anyone outside of the team or even organization should be able to read and uh, understand the objectives and key results as well. It should be fairly unambiguous. So just to sum up for your objectives, they should be focused, they should be unambiguous, they should push for progress, and they should be really specific. So on to key results. Basically, you should have about three to five key results per objective. Now, it shouldn't be uh, task oriented, it should be more outcome oriented. So you don't want to necessarily say, I'm going to do X, Y, or Z. That's more on, that's more task. There should be outcome oriented. What's the impact of the task? And we'll take a look at some of these as well. But they follow the same rules. They should be focused. They should be unambiguous. They should really push for progress. Uh, and they should be outcome oriented as well. There's a few mistakes you can make though when you're setting your OKRs. So let's dive into those now. There's usually kind of four big ones. So for stretch goals, communicating these is absolutely key and miscommunicating them can be absolutely disastrous. So if you do have a stretch, stretch goal that relies on multiple people and multiple teams interacting on the same um, O of the OKR, then make sure everyone understands that they're all on the same page and they understand the philosophy behind that objective as well. The second big thing that can kind of go wrong is just setting OKRs that uh, they're more like business as usual ones. You want teams to really push themselves to do things differently, to be customer orientated and not just kind of be based on what they can already do, whether it's the resources they have, the team that they have, the skills that they have, etc. The third thing is what Google kind of calls sandbagging, which I, I hadn't heard the term before, but it basically means that uh, if you're just going to hoard your resources uh, and easily achieve the OKR without really pushing your team, either on bandwidth or resources or uh, skill set, etc., chances are that's probably not a good OKR to set for that team. You really want to push them. And lastly, again, it's just thinking big. Uh, I know Apple's thing is think different, but definitely thinking big is something Google are, are massive on. Uh, again, 60, 60 to 70 percent of OKRs should be achieved, which means 30 to 40 percent should not be achieved. If you're getting a team that's just smashing OKRs out of the park, or they're, they're one of the rockstar teams that you have, or what's probably more likely is that their OKRs are too easy and they're not being pushed enough. I'm going to take a wild assumption here and say that maybe some of you guys are probably product focused. So let's take a look and see exactly what an OKR could look like, or a set of OKRs could look like for a product team. So perhaps your objective could be to successfully launch version two of our software platform by July 2020. 
inside of that you might have a few different key results. That could look like um, maybe getting 10,000 people to an email pre-release subscriber list. It could look like getting 15 articles written about your company or your new software launch uh, in famous publications relative to your industry. Uh, maybe it could look like optimizing your uh, page trial rate to 10% for example. So each of those key results will ultimately drive the successful launch uh, of your platform by July 2020. So there's two sites I'd like to recommend to you here in order to get inspired by and track those OKRs. One is okrexamples.co and in there you'll find a bunch of really well written OKRs that are specific, uh, ambitious, um, trackable, etc etc uh, just, as we, uh, just as we've been over. And the other site I think is actually uh, made by them is a uh, week done which allows you to track um, and maintain and update those OKRs to see how you're doing and they'll, they'll give you a little prompts to uh, see if they're on track or ahead of schedule etc. So uh, let's dive right in and I'm going to show you under the hood of what some of my OKRs are. So one of my goals for this year over the next six months is to raise an initial round of investment for the company. So we've had some investment so far but this is like a real proper round that I'd like to raise. Um, so basically, I'm just going to dive right into it. Uh, it's basically finish raising new capital for our growth needs is the title of the objective. Inside of that, we've got about five, uh, four different key results. So we've got the email and outreach to at least 100 different VCs uh, and seed funds. So that's obviously very trackable. Every time you outreach to one, increase this number here in this graph and that impacts the total uh, basically completed objective. The, with the goal of getting at least 30 second contact meetings uh, with those VCs and funds, um, which is solicited at least three term sheets uh, with the kind of minimum requirements in those term sheets from those 100 VCs and 30 second contact meetings, and then close the investment round for at least 500,000 euros in partnership with the High Potential Startup Program. So that's a outline there with the objective. Uh, again, finish raising new capital for growth and the four different key results inside of it. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Happy to answer anything in more depth. If I've uh, skipped over something that you want more questions on, let me know. I'm gonna dive right in right now. I finish off my own OKRs and hopefully we can smash 2020 together.